This is the first Mahindra Scorpio to be sold in Australia and I'm here at the local launch to test out the all new off-road SUV, India's answer to the Toyota Prado. Let's check it out. The first two Scorpios were never sold here, but the third generation is new from the ground up and aimed directly at popular large ladder frame SUVs like the Toyota Prado, Ford Everest, Isuzu MUX, Mitsubishi Pajero Sport and Toyota Fortuna. There are two variants in the range, Z8 and Z8L, and both are powered by an all new, all aluminium 2.2 litre M-Hawk four cylinder turbo diesel matched as standard with a six-speed automatic transmission and four-wheel drive across the range. Unlike previous Mahindra SUVs and the pickup, the Scorpio is very well proportioned and looks pretty tough. That's thanks to Pininfarina, which is now owned by Mahindra. The Land Rover Discovery channeling stepped roofline and standard 18-inch diamond cut alloy wheels look pretty cool. And this is the first model to wear the Indian car maker's new Twin Peaks logo. At 2,085 kilos tear, the Scorpio is hundreds of kilos lighter than the class lean Prado and Everest, but it's also significantly shorter. Its payload is limited to 525 kilos and towing capacity is subpar at 2,500 kilos. There are plenty of handy off-road features though, including an auto-locking rear diff, a decent 227 mils of ground clearance, a generous 27 degree approach angle, a watts link live rear axle, frequency dependent damping, a full size spare hill descent control and shift on the fly four wheel drive with selectable off-road modes including normal, snow, sand and mud and ruts, just like the new Everest. Mahindra says it's also working with Aussie suppliers to offer a range of aftermarket bull bars, nudge bars and a rear bar to relocate the spare wheel making way for a bigger fuel tank, which at 57 litres offers a range of less than 800 kilometres. Inside, this is by far the most luxurious Mahindra I've ever sat in. Yes, there's an old school handbrake. Yes, some of the touch surfaces are hard, but overall it stacks up in the class against its competitors. Also standard is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a cooled glove box, push button starter, dual zone climate control with second row outlets, front and rear USB ports, auto headlights and wipers, and rear parking sensor. The Z8L flagship adds a 12 speaker Sony sound system, wireless phone charger, wireless phone mirroring, front camera, front parking sensor, six way driver's seat power adjustment, and a seven inch color driver's display between the analog instrument cluster dials. But there's no native sat nav, no digital radio, nor digital instruments, let alone a head up display. Crucially though, because of supply issues, Mahindra is only offering the Scorpio as a six seater in Australia. Fitted with a pair of second row captain's chairs with one touch tumble fold mechanism. That means it doesn't match its seven seat rivals, although Mahindra says it will offer a second row bench seat as soon as possible. As you can see, it's pretty snug in the back row here of the Scorpio. It's a kid's only zone really. As you can see, my knees are up, my head is cramped. I don't have much shoulder room. There's no aircon outlets, there's no USB ports, and the side curtain airbags don't come all the way rearwards. Safety equipment includes all the basics plus tyre pressure monitoring, trailer sway control, rollover mitigation and vented brakes all round. But there are no advanced driver safety aids like autonomous emergency braking, which is likely to prevent the Scorpio from achieving a maximum five star ANCAP rating in Australia, where AEB will become mandatory for all new vehicles sold by March 2025. So forget anything you might know about ladder frame Mahindras over the last 20 years because the new Scorpio is an entire different league. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's refined. There's plenty of cabin space here. There's great visibility in all directions. Ride quality is really good despite the lack of body roll. The front seats are generous, comfortable, not all that supportive. Unfortunately, the steering wheel doesn't adjust for reach 
Steering is super light at low speed but firms up nicely at speed. And there's not too much of the chassis jiggling that most body on frame vehicles have over mid corner bumps. Steering is not um, deflected by them either. So overall, very surprised by the right handling package here. Despite its subpar outputs, the 2.2 litre turbo diesel is actually very willing. It's smooth, it's very quiet, and it's got great mid-range flexibility. The six-speed auto is intuitive enough to get the most out of it, and you'll never lack for performance. There is, however, a nasty driveline knock from the rear diff when you get on the throttle suddenly. As we discovered at the launch on a mildly challenging off-road course, the Scorpio is pretty handy off-road. There's plenty of mechanical traction even on highway tyres and on a reasonably challenging mogul. In low range, you can hear me touching down the side steps, but pretty good. So after our initial first drive, it's clear the new Scorpio is better than any SUV we've ever seen from Mahindra and a solid new entrant in Australia's growing off-road wagon market. So there's no doubt there's some important safety features missing here, not to mention a middle row bench seat, and we need more time for a proper assessment here. But the new Mahindra Scorpio is undoubtedly a solid new option for adventurous Aussie families on a budget.